four months ago. That's right, four months ago, I purchased a SDR online. It was a Melakite and I purchased it from amazon.com. Turns out there's no real amazon.com Melakites. And the one I received was really poor. It had a very t poor touch screen. It had very sensitive rotary encoders and the receive was a little lackluster. Fast forward to a couple of days later, I decided I was gonna purchase an actual Melakite SDR and I put my name on a reservation list. Now the thing about the reservation list was I didn't realize it was gonna take a few months for everything to get made. And coming from Russia, that was probably the least of my worries, but I didn't know that yet. So fast forward to a month ago, January 27th, 2022, and I get an email notification that my Melakite has been billed and it's ready to purchase. I go ahead and I pay the 19,500 ruples or 250 US dollars at the time, and I get a shipping notice fairly quickly. I was told that it may take five to six weeks to receive the unit and that would be fine because I already waited a few months. Except we had a problem. And what was that problem? Well, there's a conflict in the world now that involves Russia where the SDR was coming from. And by late February, I thought I might never see the SDR, but understandably, that's probably the least of the concerns in the world. So I let it go and I thought, hey, if it ever arrives, great. And if not, no big loss. To my surprise, just a couple of days later, this arrived. Now the Melakite SDR, which we're gonna take a look at here today, it arrives as a constructor or a kit. And let me explain what that means. In order to get past certain customs, the side plates of the actual Melakite, they're not actually installed on the SDR. And additionally, the two 18650 batteries required, they're not inside. So you have to purchase yourself two 18615 batteries, install them, and then go ahead and put on the side plates. And you'll be ready to turn on your SDR and listen to the radio waves. One of the things I wanna mention is the Melakite SDR came with a SMA female port on it. And it came with this little telescoping antenna, which is a much better quality than the knockoff one that I received with the knockoff Melakite originally. Meaning it's a little bit tighter here and it doesn't have as much play or it's not as loose. In order to get started, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw this on, but it should be noted that if you have the right connector, you could hook this up to any of your HF antennas as well. But once we turn it on, what frequency ranges does it cover? The Melakite will receive from 10 kilohertz up to 250 megahertz. And then there's a little bit of an area where you can't receive. At 400 megahertz, it picks back up and you could receive up to two gigahertz. And you might be wondering, well, what kind of signals can you receive? We'll take a look at all that here in just a second. But you can receive your typical modes like lower sideband, upper sideband, FM wide, FM narrow, AM, CW. And yeah, this thing even does CW decode. Now, in addition to the antenna that we were talking about, on the side of the DSP or the SDR here, we have a power button that you could tap once and it will actually load up your firmware screen and then go to a waterfall display for the software defined radio. And I should again mention this is a receiver only. Next to it, we have a port here for a headphone jack or possibly an external speaker. We're gonna hook up to that here in just a few moments as well. And finally, we have our micro USB, which allows us to charge this device. The speaker location is on the back of the SDR, and I find that to be sometimes a minor inconvenience depending on how you're actually positioning your SDR, but I believe that could be fixed with some 3D printed parts in the future. Now I'm really excited. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on here and maybe we'll actually bring this over to the desk so we, everybody can see it just a little bit better. Since we are on the desk right now, I went ahead and I plugged into an external antenna, being my HF antenna that is outside. And yes, the telescoping antenna serves a purpose. You could listen to local AM, FM radio stations, some shortwave listening. You could probably even hear some, some ham radio contacts on the sidebands with this and HF. And for my needs, I probably would use this to track down local sources of interference, but it's not efficient. So we went ahead and we are hooked up to a more efficient antenna and we're gonna turn this on. Now keep in mind, this isn't gonna be a complete walkthrough tutorial on this thing, but more of a brief feature overview. On the side of the radio here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap once on the button that's on the side. What's gonna happen is we're gonna have a splash screen and then momentarily we'll see our waterfall display. And there's a lot of good information on here. Let me see if I can't zoom in. If I turn the volume up, you probably can't hear it. And the reason you probably can't hear it is that the speaker 
is under here and I have this flat on the ground. We'll do a demonstration with the actual speaker audio quality here shortly. But until then, let's go ahead and plug in to my mixer. And when I plug into my mixer, nothing really happens. And that's because on the bottom of the screen here, there's these different tabs and one of them being radio and that controls the radio settings. So what we'll do is we're gonna use the touch screen that's on here and click radio. One thing I do wanna note is this contrast is a little bit different than what you're seeing. The buttons are usually dark gray in the background, but uh, because of the camera, they're showing up more blue. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just go over here to audio out and I'm gonna select one of my three options. There's headphones, there's speaker and headphones, and then finally there's just the speaker. So we're on the headphones now. Now, in order for us to go ahead and actually get out of the screen, all we have to do is we can either tap on that radio tab again, or we can just tap on the VFO knob here and we get back to the screen. So back at the main screen, there's a lot of stuff going on here and it's really simple to understand. We're gonna start at the bottom and we're just gonna talk briefly about the tabs in the bottom. And I think that they're pretty self-explanatory pretty much for anybody. The radio tab that you see on the lower left-hand side controls all the radio settings. The audio tab controls the audio settings and things you could change in there. The visual tab would be in control of things like your waterfall display and how bright or dim the actual screen itself is. NR stands for noise reduction, and this is like a shortcut to enable or disable noise reduction, which the noise reduction on this is amazing, and I'll show you here in just a second. Mode is the different type of mode you're in, whether you're in AM mode or you're listening to FM mode, wide or narrow, upper sideband, lower sideband, or CW. And in mode, you could also enable your CW decode because there is a CW decoder on here. And finally, band allows you to switch between the different bands uh, fairly rapidly. If I wanted to possibly enable noise reduction or see what I have enabled currently as far as filters go, I could look at the upper left-hand side of the screen here, and I'm going to see that there's nothing in green, which means my noise reduction's not on, my noise blanker isn't on, or my squelch isn't turned on. If I were to enable something like noise reduction, it would show in green in the upper left-hand side. And a lot of the other settings that you might adjust are under the radio tab. Back here in the main screen, there's just a couple other things. We can see that there's options here on the upper right hand side that are selected in blue. And if you tap on this rotary encoder on the top, the smaller one, you're going to switch between those three options. And once you're underlined in white, you could then adjust and it will adjust whatever option you're selected on. So for example, right now our volume is set to eh, 34 or so. But then if we continue on to the right, you can barely see it on the video, but there's a battery indicator and it does show how many volts you have left. Now mine says 3.99 and with fully charged batteries, you're gonna see 4.2 volts. There's indications here whether or not you're using a headphone or a speaker or both. And the headphone jack is currently selected in green and then the speaker is grayed out. And the reason for that is, is because we're plugged into headphone only. And of course, if you switch that under the radio settings, it will switch it here as well. If you've been paying close attention, you might notice that the time has changed on here. And that's because I set the time. In order to set the time, hold down the radio button until you hear a beep and then let go. You'll see a clock setting, which is in day, month, year format. And if you want to change something, you can tap on the rotary key until you're highlighted under there and then change whatever it is you wish to change. You would use the top rotary knob to change the, both the date and the time. Now I should mention that if you go ahead and you tap on this or hold this down, it'll exit out and it'll seem like it's saved, but it won't actually have saved. So in order to save the settings of your date and time format, hold down the radio button until you hear beep again, it'll exit out and then your time will be updated. Now we have the rotary knob on the bottom, which is the larger knob or the VFO knob. And we could move left or right and it changes our frequency by 100 hertz. As you can see, it says above the actual frequency, 100 hertz. If we wanted to change that, we could tap on the large rotary knob or VFO knob and we can change it all the way up to 50 kilohertz. For the sake of this tutorial, I am going to leave it at 100 hertz. And the only other things that we could talk about on the actual screen itself are the meter that shows the signal strength and our actual frequency. Now, if we tap on our frequency, we're gonna get a number pad, which will allow us to put in a frequency by megahertz, 
kilohertz or hertz itself. So for example, 7175 or 2 and then kilohertz brings us to 7.172 megahertz. And you can see there's actually a signal pretty close to there, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fine tune. But if maybe my signal was off a little bit and I wanted to get over there, I would tap on that signal where I'm relatively close and then I would use my ear to kind of tune in. Let's take a listen. Get that installed and that snow plow should be pretty much restored uh, not as best as I can get it restored. So anyway, over to you. I'm rambling on. Uh, KB9M, St. Charles, this is WD9IDC Rochelle. Go ahead. Now what you're going to hear on there is when I first started off, I actually had the noise reduction enabled and the signal sounded a lot clearer. As I disabled the noise reduction, we started to hear more background noise. I went ahead and I re-enabled noise reduction. We're going to listen to that one more time. So from here, let's say we want to go to some sort of CW mode. So we're going to type in just a random CW frequency. And that puts us right around the CW range. And if you were just to scroll right now or try to find something for C, it might sound kind of weird. That one sounded okay, but what I'm trying to get at is two things. A, you got to switch your mode to CW. And if you want, now you can go ahead and enable your decoder. And I have been setting my minimum signal noise ratio to 20. The other thing that we need to be considerate about is the fact that we have noise reduction enabled. And once CW is enabled, we're going to want to turn our noise reduction off and then find that signal again. Now I could appreciate that uh, this individual is possibly just learning CW or is a little slower because I'm doing the same thing myself. And that's why I really like the CW decode functionality is if I'm hearing these letters, I'm listening and I'm trying to make sure that I get it right. And then I'm looking on the screen to say, hey, yeah, I got that right. Or no, that was, that was a C, not a, a whatever. Um, so this seems to be doing a decent job. Okay, for this next part, I'm going to need you, if you're a CW Pro, and I know you are, to let me know if this is an accurate portrayal of what is being decoded for what's being heard, as I can't understand the faster speeds. I think this individual is talking about a Yesu that works like new when he got it, but I'm not completely positive and I don't know that this is accurate representation. Again, let me know what you think. Thanks. I do want to point out something else right now and let's just go ahead and turn up the volume. I get all these birdies here and I'm also hearing very, very faintly some kind of audio like voice. What is happening? You wonder. Well, just a good suggestion for you is maybe your RF gain is way too high. And if that's the case, go ahead and bring your RF gain down. 
I'm going to set mine to uh, 10 for now. We'll see how that does. Um, that looks more accurate of a portrayal or accurate of a representation of what the spectrum would look like. Now, of course, we have this big signal here, which is probably AM. Now you're probably wondering why I haven't mentioned the bandpass filter. Uh, well, again, I want to remind you, this is kind of just a basic overview of the radio or the SDR itself. And if I were to go over every feature that this radio has to offer, such as the low pass filters, the bandpass filters, the attenuation, the weight, and so forth, I might be here for one hour, two hours. And sometimes that doesn't make a very appealing video. Praise God. Hallelujah. You want Jesus to stand up? Submit yourself. Hallelujah. He'll take note of submitted submission. And I guess the other thing we could do real quick here is let's take a look at how this sounds on FM wide. Big Brother North Korea's Forgotten Prince examines the bizarre motives behind the 2017 assassination of the oldest son of North Korea's first dictator. Listen to Big Brother North Korea's Forgotten Prince on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Do it. Take the first step towards LASIK. This is a little different compared to other parts of the state and other districts. That's because between the Chicago Teachers Union and Chicago Public Schools. And in that, there is a mask mandate. And so uh, that is what has really carried them through, through all of this confusion with that downstate lawsuit. GPS says it'll have more definitive plans on its mask policy as soon as this week. Well, the Chicago Teachers Union says lifting the mask mandate. Now, as you just heard, that audio quality coming out of that back speaker is absolutely superb. It's probably one of my favorite things on this radio. For $250, I'm quite impressed, and I feel like it was a good deal, especially because you get a graphical interface and a touchscreen display. I would definitely purchase again if I had the opportunity. Now keep in mind, if you're going to purchase this, due to current events, you might not receive this, or you might not even be able to order it. That I have no control of. However, if you do see one of these for sale and you're sure that it's real, you might want to consider picking it up if you have any interest in SDRs. Using OmniRig and SDR Uno, you could hook this up to your computer to use it as an SDR, and maybe I'll do an episode here on that in the near future. But this was more of a brief overview and a display of what you can expect to receive when you buy a Melakite DSP2. Thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Ham Radio Dude 73